start with lesson 6.1 inverse trig functions. Um, this is where we're going to find a value of sine and get an angle for it. Um, so if I said to you, find angle theta whose sine is equal to 0 0.5 um, or 1 half. So there are an infinite number of angles that we could pick. We can use pi over 6. Um, we could also have 5 pi over 6. Um, and since all these are coterminal, we could also have 17 pi over 6. Um, going in the reverse direction, we could have negative 11 pi over 6. So there's an infinite number of ones. So the math community here, we need to come up with just one single answer that we all get to the same answer. So we have to restrict the domains. So first thing we're going to do is take a look at the graphs of sine, cosine, and tangent, and find a place where the horizontal horizontal line test can be passed and that will allow us to have an inverse function that will be defined. So first let's look at the sine function. Okay, so we're looking at the sine function here. I'm just going to quickly make a graph of the parent sine function, which we all should be able to do at this point. So sine looks something like that. For an inverse to exist, we would have to pass the horizontal line test, which we can't at this point. Um, so the community, trying to keep close to the origin, restricted the domain for sine um, between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. It's important to note that this domain is um, negative pi over 2. We're not going to use 3 pi over 2 when we're listing our angles. So our restricted domain is negative pi over 2 inclusive, that's why we have the hard bracket over 2. Um, for that, we would be able to get ourselves an angle that we can all agree upon. If you look at the range here, it's going from negative 1 to positive 1. So our range is negative 1 to positive 1. All right, now let's look at the basic home parent cosine function. Um, so if we're looking at that one here, let's move this down a little bit. I'm going to quickly going to draw the cosine function. So normally starts at 1, middle, low, middle, high, repeating the pattern on the other side. So I need to, again, restrict the domain somewhere where it would pass the um, horizontal line test. The math community has decided. That, that will be between 0 and pi. So um, any um, number given there, we'll be able to give the angle. If we have the coordinate, somewhere between 0 and pi radians. The range for this guy is also going to be negative 1 to positive 1. All right, so let's move on to our tangent function. Whoops, that shouldn't be there. All right, so we're looking at our tangent function. Sorry about that, folks. Um, and I'm going to, again, put in a quick version of our tangent function. It normally has a period of pi heading in the upward direction. It would look something like this. And we would have repeated the patterns on each side. Just do one other set over here. Okay, so there's your basic tangent function. Um, if you just look at a full period of the tangent function, it does um, pass that horizontal line test. So the domain restriction for tangent will be the same as sine. It's going to be between negative pi over 2, inclusive, to pi over 2. If you look at the range for our tangent function, it continues both in both directions to both negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, looking at this table over here, um, so we have our restricted sign, negative pi over 2, pi over 2, and the range. When we have an inverse function, what we normally do is switch the x and the y and solve for y. So we're essentially switching the domains and the ranges. So for the inverse sign, sometimes you'll see it as arc sign, the domain and range for the sign are reversed. Um, this will happen also for inverse cosine and inverse tangent. 
And the domains are going to become important as to whether we're able to actually give an angle or not. All right, so let's flip our papers over and we'll take a look at a couple of examples. All right, so I am looking to um, find the inverse sine of the square root of 3 over 2, knowing that sine is only defined in quadrants 1 and quadrants 4. It's positive, so this angle that I'm looking for must be in quadrant number 1. And you have to say to yourself, what angle in radians is going to give me a sine of square root of 3 over 2? And that would be pi over 3. Looking at example B, I'm looking for the um, inverse cosine of 0 radians. So, um, or where, what angle would give me a cosine of 0? Now, cosine is defined in quadrants 1 and 2 between 0 and pi. The only place cosine is 0 is right here. So that would be at pi over 2. All right, let's look at our tangent inverse. I want to know where will tangent be negative 1. So keeping in mind that tangent is y over x, um, it is negative. So since tangent is defined in quadrants 1 and quadrants 4, we're definitely looking for an angle in quadrant 4. And the only place that would happen is where the coordinates our square root of 2 over 2, negative square root of 2, and that happens at negative pi over 4. So I'm not going to call this 7 pi over 4. Our domain is then restricted between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. So we are going to have to go into the negative direction. Okay, so let's take a look at D. Let's move this down just a tad easier for me to write. Okay, so I want the inverse sine. Um, it's going to be negative since sine is defined in quadrants 1 and 4. I know it's going to be in quadrant 4. That's where y is negative. What angle would give me a sine coordinate of negative square root of 2 over 2? This would be also negative pi over 4. All right, problem E, cosine, the inverse cosine of negative one-half. Cosine is defined in quadrants one and quadrants two. Since it's negative, my angle is going to have to be sitting in quadrant number two. And I want to know what angle is going to get me a cosine of negative one-half. So since we're rotating this way, we're not going to give any negative angles. We're to do it that way. So we have... Uh, 2 pi over 3 will give us a cosine coordinate of negative 1 half 2. All right, finally, looking at tangent, inverse tangent, uh, that's going to give us square root of 3 over 3. Um, in time, you'll be able to recognize it a little better, but you might have to figure some things out at first. Tangent is defined in quadrants 1 and quadrants 4. It's positive, so I do know the terminal side is going to be sitting in quadrants 1. I have two choices here. At pi over 6, the coordinates are square root of 3 over 2, 1 half. And at pi over 3, they are 1 half square root of 3 over 2. Um, so what we are looking for is to get this here. So tangent is, again, y over x. So let me try pi over 6. That would be 1 half over the square root of 3 over 2. That would simplify to 1 over the square root of 3, which does simplify to the square root of 3 over 3. So the answer here would be pi over 6. All right, sometimes we have more than one. We have a composite. Um, and normally what will happen if you take the inverse of a sine of an angle, you're just going to get the angle itself. But it has to be where the domain is defined, where it's been restricted to. Um, it's going to be important that you really look at the symbolism, whether the inverse functions on the inside of the parentheses or just a plain um, sign is on the inverse. 
So let's look at problem A here. So looking at problem number A, the first thing I'm really taking notice to is that it's asking me to take the sine of this number here. So this is an angle in radians. So if it's just the sine, it's looking for an angle in radians, um, or the coordinate of that. Um, it's going to give you some angle theta, of which then you reverse it, and then you're going to wind up with point six eight. Okay, for B, if I look at the sine of 7 pi over 6, that would put me over here in quadrant number 3. However, sine is not defined in quadrant number 3, so I need to find another angle where it is defined that would have the same coordinate. So if I go to quadrant 4, the reference angle here is pi over 6. I could have the same reference angle there, get the same y coordinate. So I'm going to replace this then with the inverse sine of negative put the sign in there, pi over 6. These guys would then go and cancel each other out. So we're going to have as an answer negative pi over 6. Okay. When I look at a problem like this, I want to look at um, what's on the inside here. So it's telling me to find an angle whose coordinate is, is negative 0 0.08. So it is not looking for, um, uh, it's looking for an angle, and this is a coordinate. Here in the problem above, it was an angle. This now is becoming a coordinate. Um, so long as this is in the defined, um, the defined domain for the inverse function, um, this will work. Since for the inverse function, we are defined between negative 1 and 1, negative 0 0.8 certainly does fit inside there. So these guys are going to cancel each other out, and you're going to get negative 0 0.8. All right, so looking at D, it's not the inverse. It's telling me the cosine. So this 5 pi over 8 is an angle. 5 pi over 8 would be sitting in quadrant 2. Cosine is defined in quadrant 2. So we don't have to get to another spot. And these guys will cancel each other out. And we wind up with 5 pi over 8. OK, let's look at the tangent here. Again, just going to move this up slightly. A little easier to write with. So I'm looking for the inverse tangent. So the inverse is on the inside. So this is becoming a coordinate for which we're looking for the angle. Um, since for the inverse tangent, the domain is defined between negative infinity and infinity, there really is no restriction there. And since there's no restriction there, the tangent and the inverse tangent will cancel each other out, and we'll wind up with negative 5.25. And our last problem in this little section 3 here. Um, it's asking for a tangent. So this is an angle, and I'm looking for the coordinate. If I look at 2 pi over 3, that would put us over here in quadrant 2. Um, tangent is only defined in quadrants 1 and 4, so I'm going to have to find another reference angle with the same coordinate. Since tangent is negative in quadrant 2, I'm going to be looking for an angle in quadrant 4. Um, so at negative 2 pi, so if over here, if we went 2 pi over 3, our reference angle would be pi over 3, which means I need the same reference angle there. So I'm going to replace 2 pi over 3 with negative pi over 3. Um, now these will cancel each other out. I'm going to be left with negative pi over 3. Okay, one last thing is for us to um, just find the inverse of a function. You've done this before in Algebra 2. I think we did a little bit of that in class in the beginning of the year as well. Um, to find the inverse of a function, the first thing you're going to do is switch the x and the y. So I'm going to say, okay, 
let's let x equal 2 sine y minus 1. It's giving me a domain between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, which is where sine is defined. Um, so we don't need that to actually find the inverse. First thing I'm going to do is solve for y. So we're going to wind up with x plus 1 is equal to 2 sine y. To get sine y by itself, we'll divide by 2. Uh, x plus 1 divided by 2. And to get rid of the sine, we're going to have to do the opposite or take the inverse. So y is going to equal the inverse sine of x plus 1 over 2. So that's how you find the inverse. Then it asks us to state the range of f and the domain of the inverse of f. Remember, the range of the function is the same as the domain as the inverse function. So if I were to graph this original equation here, um, it would have been moved down 1. And I'm not going to graph the whole thing, but it has an amplitude of 2. So we're at negative 1 has an amplitude of 2, which would put me up at 1. If I subtracted 2 here, I'd be at negative 3. And that's how the sine curve is going to float. So the range of f is going to be negative 3 to 1. And the range of f will also be the domain of the inverse function. Okay, that's the end of today's lesson. This one will have a part to continue in the next class. We'll have 6.1a. Um, good luck with your homework, and please let us know if you have any questions. Thank you.